So we headed inside uh, to the Buffalo History Museum's research library for this portion of Buffalo Blossoms Reimagined. Um, I'm Melissa Brown, the director at the History Museum, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the resources we have relating to Ferris Japan at the Pan American Exposition. Uh, the Pan American Exposition, as many of you know, was held here in Buffalo in 1901. And the Japanese gardens, um, the, the actual campus of the History Museum, as was the History Museum, all part of that original event in 1901. So when you are down behind the museum and on our grounds, you're actually in very close proximity to where the exposition um, all took place. And uh, in our collection, there are a lot of guidebooks. So uh, we actually have uh, collections stored uh, by themes in our archives, and uh, this is our vertical file. So you would find things like these souvenir guidebooks that give, you know, that could have been purchased at the time of 1901 and give you an idea of the different things that you could do at the exposition. And inside a lot of these guidebooks, you would also find maps like this one of the Midway. Um, in particular, you could. Uh, find out more about what you wanted to see and do at the exposition and kind of plan your trip. So I picked this guidebook in particular because it focuses on just the midway. You can see it gives you some broader views of the exposition, but then it also dials right into our topic for today, which is the Farish Japan exhibit that was at the exposition. So. For those of you who are new to Pan Am history or um, maybe have not um, done as extensive research, there were lots of different things to see and do at the exposition. But one of the, the big features and one of the intentions of the organizers was that individuals who were coming would have an experience or an opportunity to learn more about other cultures and other places in the world. Because of course, this is before you know, you could Google things and, uh, or even before, you know, what we would know is a printed encyclopedia today. So for a way for different guests to interact with people from different cultures, there were actually cultures on display at the exposition. And it's a, it's a difficult history to um, look at because really, instead of interpreting the nuance of culture, there was kind of these homogenized experiences that would happen for people to see um, to give them an idea, and it was intended to be educational, but there were a lot of lines that, that were blurred in doing that. Um, let's uh, take a look at some of the images we actually have. So these are Hollinger boxes, and um, they're all acid-free, so we store our collections in them. And for the photos, we, um, you notice I didn't use gloves with the guidebook, but we will use gloves to look at the photos because our fingerprints can do damage. So to orient you a bit, the Pan Am grounds were about 350 acres of property. And within those grounds at the northmost boundary, so if you were traveling down Elmwood Avenue today and you were passing uh, where the Pierce Arrow um, company is or where like Hadley Exhibits is um, on Elmwood, you would be in pretty close proximity to where um, Ferris Japan was on the Pan Am grounds. It would, would have been a little bit east of, of Elmwood Avenue. And here's um, an image you can actually see um, there was a canal that circled the entire grounds. It was about a mile in its um, total distance around the grounds, and you could uh, take rides through the different exhibits. And this is actually, you can see um, the canal coming through this image. Here's another image um, featuring some of the, the rickshaws. There were many different modes of transportation available for people to actually purchase a concession to ride in so you wouldn't have to walk the grounds. They were 350 acres, so that was a lot of, uh, a lot of steps to get in. So people, if they had the money, um, would go ahead and pay for a different mode of transportation. There were roller chairs, and then there were also um, rickshaws available 
um, to transport you. So these are some of these photos that are in these um, plastic sleeves in particular are interesting to me as a researcher because these were not taken by professional photograph uh, photographers at the exposition. Um, individuals were allowed to photograph while they were there, but they had to pay a fee to do that. So they're harder to come by. These more, um, what I would say, casual photos of people's experiences at the grounds, those are a little harder to come by. And I do, I do like to look at them and how people experienced um, the exposition themselves instead of having the more kind of stilted professional um, photos. Here's, um, here's another um, image uh, in the exhibit. I also like to pick up on the details of um, the electrical lighting. Um, in this, let's see, in this one here, you can actually see the bulbs um, from the exposition, which the lighting was a major feature uh, for, just to give you an idea, um, it was about 25 cents, um, which would be about $5 today to visit uh, Fair Japan. And all of the different concessions that were on the Midway each cost their own individual price tag. So most people would have been able to afford that initial fee to get into the exposition, which was probably around 12 or $15 today. But what you would have been able to afford to do when you got onto the grounds really would have depended on how many resources you had. So you would have to plan your, your visit and decide how many of the different midway concessions you would really be able to afford to take in. So for uh, Farish Japan, it was about um, equivalent to $5 today. And you could walk around the gardens in, um, in the display and shop at the bazaar um, building. Children could also, or actually visitors, uh, children and adults, could pay an extra 10 cents, which is about $2 today, for a cup of tea served in the tea house um, by the, the different um, women who were resident in the exhibit um, in Farish, Japan. Um, there was also a theater that provided entertainment, and this was a, a feature of many of the Midway concessions. There were these theater environments where there would be scheduled performances throughout the day for people to take in. Uh, for this particular display, and again going back to that educational idea, there were uh, the entire display was constructed of bamboo and other materials native of Japan. So there really would have been that exposure and kind of that immersive element for people where when you look at these photos that are very tight into the experience, you really don't get a sense that you're on an exposition or a fairground. You really feel like you're immersed in this otherworldly atmosphere. But then when you pull back on the wider shots and you see the aerial cycle and the electric tower and some of the more um, spectacular buildings on the ground, you realize that you are not, um, in fact, traveling to another place, um, but you are on, on the fairgrounds. So as we discussed, there are, uh, were lots of features that were just part of this experience in Ferris, Japan, all those different concessions. And overall, in the six-month time of the exposition, this particular concession was the 12th highest um, grossing at $111,000. So it was a very popular attraction. But we wanted to share a little bit of, about this particular um, piece of the Pan Am today because of the connection with um, Japanese culture and Japanese history. And of course, as we're uh, thinking about our programming for the Buffalo Blossoms Reimagined, uh, we really wanted to highlight this particular part of the exposition's history. These resources, if you're interested in learning more about this or other parts of the exposition, are available in our research library um, all the time. Uh, right now, while we are still um, maintaining safe distances and are at home, you can look up our resources online on our website, buffalohistory.org. Uh, or, you know, once uh, we are free to welcome guests back and uh, do so safely, please do come out and check out some of these resources in the library for yourself. Uh, there's so much here to explore. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me today and do enjoy the rest of our programs that uh, our partners are providing for Buffalo Blossoms Reimagined. Thank you.